that sort of corruption, then it's uh, the international community also that shares responsibility uh, with us. Amidst international criticism, the Afghan president hits back, questioning the West's involvement with his country. That is the U.S. media reports. Barack Obama has finally made a decision about troop numbers in Afghanistan. I'm Shihab Ratansi. This is the Hour of News, live from Washington, D.C. <music> Afghanistan's newly re-elected president has criticized the West's commitment to this country and accused it of contributing to the problems of corruption. Hamid Karzai's comments in a U.S. TV interview came amid media reports that Barack Obama has decided on a military strategy for Afghanistan, claims now already dismissed by the U.S. president's national security advisor. Hamid Karzai says Washington and its allies had not paid attention to the suffering of his people until the attacks of September the 11th. And responding to persistent allegations of corruption leveled at the highest levels of his government, he said Afghanistan alone was not to blame. When we say... Uh uh, corruption. Uh, it means uh, the usual corruption in any government, uh, especially in a third world country uh, like Afghanistan, uh, with years of, uh, of uh, um, breakdowns and uh, lack of governance. And then we also mean um, uh, corruption of a different kind, which is a lot more serious, which is new to Afghanistan. That is with the arrival of a lot of money to Afghanistan. And th for that sort of corruption, then it's uh, the international community also that shares responsibility uh, with us. And that's what I hope we can correct together. Well, in that interview, Karzai also said the temporary withdrawal by the United Nations of two thirds of its staff would have, quote, no impact on the country. He said Afghans wouldn't notice whether or not they return. Joining us now for some analysis of Karzai's comments, Masoud Aziz, a former political advisor at the Afghan embassy here in Washington. What's Karzai up to then with this interview? Well, I think that from what I heard, uh, it, there's a number of uh, 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 things that I like. One was the recognition of a certain level of uh, corruption, which is a very important thing to, uh, to say. Also, Karzai sp spoke about uh, a partnership uh, between between Afghans and, and the international community. That, that, that's extremely important. W what I'm uh, mostly concerned about, though, is that in all of this discussion about whose role is important, the international uh, coalition, the Afghan government, what needs to be done, what are the issues on the table, we're actually running out of time. It's extremely important now to move forward. Right. When he talks about corruption, he says, look, it's not just us. It's, it's, the, you know, it's the West. It's the contractual mechanisms, the contract that go from one to second to third to fourth. I mean, he's very much saying, look, you're, you're hypocrites. You're calling me corrupt. It's actually your methods and your mechanisms that are making Afghanistan a corrupt country. I think there's some truth to that. And I think we need to recognize that. Obviously, at the beginning, when we, uh, the international community got involved in warlords, in helping out the Taliban, they keep kept them on the payroll, and that really didn't help out. It actually weakened the central government's capability. But on the other hand, this is a new government now. You know, President Karzai has been announced to be the new president. Now it's time to move forward on this. And in my opinion, we're wasting time. We don't have time now to discuss. We have to have a new government in place, a new cabinet in place, we have to have, in my opinion, four important steps. One, in my opinion, to have a lawyer jurga, the Grand Assembly, that would galvanize the Afghans around this issue. Two, we would have, we need to have a new cabinet in place right away. We need to have new ministers in place. Three, we need to have an anti-corruption process that's clear, that is, um, has definitive timelines, and it's in partnership with the national community. And Karzai is, is up to giving all these, uh, of moving forward in all these issues when he says, for example, corruption, well, we are acting on that, and you can trust me to act on corruption. And, and frankly, is the U.S. even that serious about rooting out corruption, or do they just want a few symbolic, symbolic heads to roll anyway? No, I think that on? on both sides, to say it is not enough. I heard uh, Secretary Clinton today talk about the fact that um, the U.S. government is going to deliver uh, to the Afghan government a specific set of expectations and measures to look at corruptions and other issues. So this is need, this needs to but, be a But isn't all this a bit of an irrelevance? Isn't one of the reasons why Karzai feels he can be a bit tougher in, in his rhetoric is he is a bit of an irrelevance to the strategic 
considerations on happening right now in Washington, D.C. They're not consulting him. They're not consulting the Afghan parliament, are they? This is all happening in D.C. What is the relationship? What does he have to do with what the U.S. is going to do in the next few months in Afghanistan? The relationship between the U.S. government and the Afghan government has been strained recently, no doubt about that. The election is that process, but it's critically important to have a legitimate Afghan government in place. Why am I saying that? Not just for the Afghans, which is very important, of course. And the process, the election process, you know, actually didn't help in that process. But it's also important now, despite the fact that the U.S. government or NATO would want to have help, you know, assistance, send assistance in Afghanistan, ha uh, send additional help, there's another issue. If we lose the American public's uh, the public's actual willingness to continue this, this disengagement. President Obama is going to be hamstrung in, in doing right, so. And you have to wonder what comments like this are, are going to have, you know, what effect they're going to have on the American public and politicians. But we want you to stay with us for, for a moment, actually, uh, because we also have an Al Jazeera exclusive from Afghanistan, and we wanted your thoughts on that. Uh, the exclusive footage which we have obtained appears to show the Taliban showing off U.S. Weapon, weaponry it seized. Fighters say they seized the cash in eastern Nuristan province after U.S. soldiers pulled out of the area. Jonah Hull has more. High in the mountains of eastern Afghanistan, Taliban fighters display what appear to be American arms and ammunition apparently seized at a former U.S. combat outpost. And the former political advisor to the Afghan embassy here in Washington, D.C., Masood Aziz is still with us. So then we have Karzai lashing out, apparently, at the U.S. saying, look, you know, you, you're to blame for some of the problems we have. And then we have evidence that the McChrystal strategy is already being put into place, despite the deliberations, and it's leading to arms ending up in Taliban hands. I think this, this specific incident is really not something that we can expand overall. It, it is, cr uh, if I'm correct, uh, uh, General McChrystal, what he's trying to do is concentrate now on population centers. There was, you know, previously these outposts in valleys, in extremely remote valleys, they're not, they don't need to be there. And there's not sufficient troops actually to do this. So this is the right thing. The Taliban are going to a point, they don't have a problem in finding weapons. These are not weapons that they can really, you know, rely on. So they will always have weapons. That is not the issue. Um, but, it, but there are two other points, uh, you know, that I wanted to uh, put in place that didn't get a chance to do that. The reconciliation process with the insurgency, with the insurgents, with the Taliban, need to go forward now. That plan needs to be in place. That negotiation process has to be, from the uh, uh, Afghan government's perspective, assisted by the international community, not the other way around. So that has to be, that's part of the state building process that has to be in place and perhaps even have, so to speak, a framework of a bond agreement number two, an Afghan compact in two ways. One, an Afghan compact between the government of Afghanistan and the Afghan people and one between the government of Afghanistan and the international community. Without these steps, I think we will still have the problems that you pointed out and will fester and, and go and on. And this won't simply be a carve up by the warlords of different territories of Afghanistan backed up by international troops for a government that's illegitimate at the center. That's a possible scenario. And that's what you're selling to the American people? I think that from the American uh, people's perspective, this war has gone very, uh, very long. And in fact, the Afghan war I itself hasn't been that very long because we were distracted with the Iraqi war, and there's war fatigue. If we don't take these steps, the legitimacy of the government of Afghanistan, the formation of it, and the pursuit of this new strategy right away, as in tomorrow, I think we, we can probably risk that. Uh, there was initial reports, again, and we get these almost every other day, actually, that Obama's made his decision when they were suggesting 40,000 troops. not clear whether there was a combat troops or maybe 18,000 combat troops. And and many support troops, but I mean, what, what do you make of these numbers being thrown around? If you believe there's a military solution to this, how, how many troops do you think they need? They're Certainly, needed. I don't believe anybody, including the, on the military side, nobody is saying there's a military but solution. But if you need to, to be that. backed up by an immense number of American troops. The, the number of troops have been deficient in Afghanistan since the beginning of the war. As you know, we went to ouster uh, the Taliban with 600 American troops. So we need to get to a position uh, where McChrystal is including that. And it, whether it's 20,000 or 40,000, we need to go forward with it now, I, as opposed to several weeks from now. We don't have that time. Masood Aziz, thank you. And I should actually point out that Obama is having his, his next latest meeting with his commanders on Wednesday. We'll be covering what we hear from them. Masood Aziz, thank you very much.